So today we're going to be tying a pretty simple pike fly on a uh, Gamagatsu B10S Stinger in a 3 yacht. It is going to be composed of bucktail, Crelex, flashaboo, and then a, a fish helmet. So the cool thing about this pike fly is it's really cheap to tie. Um, a lot of pike flies they call for, you know, like saddle hackle and all sorts of materials and they can get expensive and kind of out of control. This one on the other hand is super simple and it's super cheap. So to start, I'm just going to make a solid thread base here and leave some room up there at the, uh, the eye of the hook that I'm going to come back here. I'm going to take some red bucktail and I'm going to get a pinch of it, maybe about the size of a pencil. I'm going to come down and trim it as close as I can to the actual tail. And what I'll do here is I'm not going to hollow tie this part of it. We're just going to tie this end on facing backwards. And be prepared to clean up a mess after you tie some of these flies because the bucktail has a tendency to go everywhere. So we're just going to wrap that in. Bring it back like that and make sure it's nice and evenly spread around the entire hook. I like that there and then I'm just going to come in with my scissors and trim this out. Doesn't have to be perfect and I actually want to create a bit of a, a taper to tie down on to. So we're going to move our thread forward, capture all that bucktail and then come on back to where we tied it in. I like that. Now I'm going to get a lice brush. If you don't have a lice brush, it's something that you should absolutely get if you're going to be tying any sort of bigger flies. Um, it makes it really easy to really separate a lot of this bucktail. Alright. I like that. Then next we're going to grab our red Crelex here and pull out a bit of it. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to taper it. So I'll gently grab some on each side and separate it just to, so it doesn't look like it's a flat end of the tail and you can kind of create more of a fishy look. And for this fly I'm just going to grab it right in the middle. Lay it on top, just like that, and then take some loose wraps right around the top of it. Not pulling down too hard yet. And then I'm going to press my thumb on the Crelex just like that to start to separate it. Move it around the fly and now I'm going to take a couple firm wraps to secure that. And then for the rest of the, the Crelex that we have up front, I'm just going to kind of pull it back and gently pull it back towards the back half of the fly, trying to make it relatively even all the way around. And then take a couple wraps over that, secure it. And see how it looks. See how even we got it. So we're going to do a little bit more on the bottom just to cover up that bottom half. Probably about half as much as we did on top, so not a ton. And again, I'm just going to slowly pull each side and taper the ends. And the hair clip is pretty essential for these bigger flies so you can hold the materials kind of like that and they're not falling down and getting caught in your thread wraps. And then I'll do a couple wraps here. Again, pulling it forward, making sure none of those fibers get trapped, and making sure that Crelex is where we want it. I'm going to 
pull some on this right side, cover up right under the hook there, and just gently pull it back and capture everything just like that. Put some firm wraps down. Roll it back over, unclip it, and just pull everything back a little bit. And as you can start to see, we're starting to get a bit of a tapered shape to this fly. And it's starting to take form. So next, we're going to take some Magnum Flashaboo in Sunset. And I'll grab maybe about six pieces of it. And... What we're going to do is try and even it out just a little bit. And then I'll fold it in half and I want this to be just short of the end of the fly just like that. This is just to add a little bit of extra flash. So what I'm going to do is I'll measure it out and then I'm going to trim maybe about a little bit less than a third of it off. And then I'll fold it in half again just like I did with the Crelex. I'm going to put it right on top, try to spread it out with my fingers as much as I can, do a couple soft wraps, make sure it's a bit spread out and then I'll take the stuff that's hanging in front and try to slowly pull it back and spread it around the fly as evenly as possible. And then I'm going to grab it, take a couple wraps, back up towards the crelex of the bucktail there. Make sure it's nice and secure. And this just adds a bit of a different color pattern when you're down, when it's down in the water. So it's not all just red, there's some gold in there. And I'll pull it all back like that. We're starting to get the look of that, that injured bait fish that we're looking for. Couple more wraps. Don't be afraid to really put some heat on these ones and really secure everything. And then before we move on, I will take some super glue and just put a dab on top. Take a bucket and just spread it around. It's worth taking this extra time and these extra steps with the super glue um, so this fly will last for more than one fish. And if you're going to take this much time to tie the fly, you might as well make sure that, that it lasts for you. Perfect. So next I'm going to move my thread to, I don't know, right about the middle of the fly here. And we're going to repeat the process. But this time we are going to hollow tie the bucktail and give it a bit more body. So I'm going to grab a chunk of bucktail right around the diameter of a pencil again. And nip it off. I'm going to pull all those short little fibers out. Make sure I like it. And I usually don't worry about trimming the tips of the bucktail right now. I'll do that after I tie it in. And then I'm going to gently wrap it around the hook and kind of circle it around and do two or three really gentle wraps before I give it a little bit of heat. Just like that. And you can trim this bucktail if you want to. It really doesn't matter. You're not going to see it at all. Um, I'm kind of OCD about my flies and like them to look perfect. So I'll just come back through here and at least make everything even. Yeah, that'll work. And then next, what we're going to do is grab our... So what you can do is just get a normal normal pen 
and I take the ink out or the little ink tube whatever out and what I'll do is I'll try and separate these this bucktail here and I'll just lay it over the eye of the hook and push it back just like that. You might have to do it a few times until you get all the bucktail pushed back. Looks good nice and even. And then I'll just grab it with my fingers and this is how we're going to hollow tie it. So I'm just going to make thread wraps in front and I'm just going to slowly work my way back and forth until I build up a bit of a slope here and it starts holding the bucktail at the angle that I want it to be held at. The cool thing about this is it's going to have a lot more body in the water and it's going to stand up more than if you weren't to hollow tie it because you're essentially pushing back against the way it wants to stand up. Um, this is going to take a bit of time but it'll be worth it in the end. And I'm just going to keep working my way back and keep letting it build and build and build. As you can see there, we're starting to get more of a, a shape that we want. And with most of these hollow ties, that'd be a good angle to leave it at. But with this one in particular, um, this is tied to be a smaller, thinner fly without that big aggressive presentation. So I'm going to keep tying it back. That'll work. So with this part of the bucktail, I'm just building the profile of the fly. I don't want it to be too, too big yet. And then what we're going to do now is just kind of repeat that process with the Crelex. Grab a clump of it. Get any long ones out of there, any short ones. Grab it, fold it in half again. And do put it right on top do a couple loose to medium wraps you don't want it to be too loose or you're just going to end up pulling all this material out when you're trying to straighten it then I'll take my thumb on top separate the materials like we did before now we're really starting to get that taper that minnowy fishy look here. I'm going to grab it, flip it over, and do the same to the bottom now. Grab a big chunk, of, not a big chunk, maybe a medium chunk, right about half as much as you put on the top here. Fold it in half. Do a few wraps, fold it back over. And try and cover up a lot of that bucktail. The bucktail is there to give it a, give it a body. We want to see it to a point, but we don't want all the fibers just sticking through. That looks good. Make sure I didn't miss any areas. All right, so now we're really starting to get that minnowy tapered kind of big to small body that we're looking for. And then now I'm gonna grab six or eight pieces of the Hedron, Hedron Magnum Flashaboo in Sunrise. Again, I'm just going to nip them so they end, you know, right, right before the end of the tail there. And I'll tie them in right on top. Try and spread them out over the body just a little bit. Get that Crelex out of there. Do some soft wraps just to secure them and then I'll pull them back over as evenly as I can. That looks good there. Alright, and then I'm going to 
Again, wrap that flash all the way back up there to where we tied the Crelex and the bucktail in. Put some super firm wraps on that. Move my thread forward and get our super glue one more time. Put a little glob on there and then work it around all that thread. Make sure nobody's going anywhere. Perfect. Do a couple wraps. Back over it. Now I'm going to start this maybe right about there. I don't know, eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch back from the eye of the fly, eye of the hook. And I'm going to grab another chunk of red bucktail right about the same size diameter of a pencil and we're gonna hollow tie this one as well so we'll get rid of all the little short ones that we don't want in there lay this right on top couple gentle wraps, one, two, three, four, and then put a bit more heat on it and secure it. Just get a couple of those longer ones. That looks good to me. I'll pull this apart a bit. Uh, a little bit in on the bottom there. It looks like we missed missed it. So I'll grab just a bit more bucktail. That'll do it. Again, grab my pen, push everything back. Oh. And we're just going to come back forward and do that hollow tie again, making a bunch of wraps right in front until we build up a ramp, if you will, to hold that bucktail up. Make sure that's all even. That looks pretty good. Couple more wraps how to do it. Perfect. And then one more time we're gonna do our Crelex. Grab a nice chunk of it, taper the ends. Pull each side a bit. Tie that in. Try and separate it as evenly as possible over the top of the fly here. That's starting to look good. I'm gonna grab it here. Do the same on the bottom. And just lay it right on top here. Couple firm wraps, couple soft ones. Make sure we get it where we want it. Spread it out with your thumb just by pushing against it and moving it side to side. And then capture it. And this part of the fly is going to take the longest because this is the, the part that you're really going to see. So really take your time and make sure that the, the taper that you've put on the body looks right and that you have all your 
all your bucktail covered up. But I like that. And as you can see, this is going to have a really nice bait fish presentation look in the water. And then what we'll do here is I'm just going to take some all red Magnum Flashaboo. Pretty much repeat the same process where I want this to be right about where that tail is going to be. So I'm just going to trim it just a little bit. And lay this right on top. Do a couple loose wraps so I can spread it out with my thumb and then pull the rest of that flash back over and get it where we want it. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. Just grab a little clump of the red flash here. Trim it just a bit. And tie it right on the bottom. Spread it out with my thumbs a little bit and just give it a couple gentle pulls. And then take the rest of this, bring it up around the top in front of the fly. And just take your time when you're working with all this flash because it can be tricky to get it to cooperate, but It'll be worth it in the end when the fly's done. So now we pull it all back, have the nice look that we want. That looks good. Now I'm going to take a fish mask in a size eight and a half. What I'll do before I whip finish here is just make sure it fits on there the way I want it. Grab my whip finisher. Nip it off. Make sure that fish mask is going to be right where we want it. That looks about right. And then what I'll do is I'll grab some super glue. And I'm essentially just going to fill up the inside of the mask here. Before I put it on. And then I'll push it back. I'll make sure it's nice and centered, nice and level, the way I want it to look. And then I'm going to grab my thread again and make some wraps right in front of it here just to really secure it on there, make sure it doesn't come off. And then I will whip finish again. And then we'll grab our eyes. So these are the living eyes in wind. And again, they're in an eight and a half, 8.5. And I am just gonna put a dab of super glue in each of the little eye holes, eye sockets, whatever you wanna call them. And then you just place it in there. And grab your other one. And do the same thing on the other side. Then I'll give them a gentle press to make sure they're secure. And then finally, I'll take my super glue. And there's little holes in the side of the mask here. And I'll try and kind of squirt my glue up into those holes and really douse the whole thing in glue. And that's it. Cheap, simple, easy pike fly.